میں اللہ تعالی کو حاضر حاضر جان کر کہتا ہوں کہ میں خلافت احمدیہ پر ایمان رکھتا ہوں اور میں خلافت احمدیہ کو قیامت تک جاری رکھنے کے لیے پوری کوشش کروں گا اور اسلام کی تبلیغ کو دنیا کے کناروں تک پہنچانے کے لیے انتہائی کوشش کرتا رہوں گا These were the words of Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad as he took an oath that would forever transform his life. He was no longer as other men. He was a man of God. It was the 18th day of December in the year 1928. The day brought news of the first ever train from Amritsar. The mood among the locals of Kadyan was festive. Many of the elders of the town had gone to Amritsar to board the train and experience the historic journey. The commencement of the train service would usher a new era for the movement, as more people could now visit Kadyan. This town was once home to Hazrat Mirza Khulam Ahmad, peace be upon him, who claimed to be the promised Messiah. His son and the second successor of his movement, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad, was now leading his cause. The day also brought further good news for Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad and his wife, Hazrat Maryam Siddiqa. It was the birth of their son, Tahir. His mother took every precaution to ensure his good health and upbringing. He grew up as a happy child, ready to play and take any challenge thrown at him. Being the son of the Khalifa and also the only son of Hazrat Maryam Siddiqa, he occupied a privileged position but he was never overprotected or spoiled. His mother wanted him to be a doctor or physician, but he was never interested in pursuing such a career. Abba, I remember that my father was a doctor of my husband, and he was a doctor of my husband, and he was a doctor of my husband. As a humble child, I started my life in the ordinary schools of Khadiyan, I was not very, I was never a very brilliant student, but always I was interested in human affairs, in social works, and so on and so forth. So I managed to scrape through in my school education. At the young age of 16, he had to bear a poignant loss. His mother died in 1944 when he was appearing in his matriculation examination. During that uh, period, his mother died. Despite his grief at this difficult time in his life, he continued with his studies. He developed an interest not only in classical Urdu writers, but also Shakespeare, Charles Dickens, Conan Doyle, and other English writers. He started writing poetry. He also developed a deep interest in the study of the Holy Quran and started to memorize it but soon realized that he was more interested in the meaning of the words. He took studying the Quran intently. He discovered his father's library and started reading books on Darwin's theory of evolution. Although he never had doubts about Islam or the existence of God, he started investigating the possibility of the existence of God on a logical basis. I have myself researched into this issue because right from my childhood it has been bothering me in so many ways. And because the religion I believe in is, is a religion of which I am completely convinced. Those parts of which I was not convinced, I have been praying about them and also making my own investigations so that today as I stand, I can say honestly that I believe in everything which I claim I believe in through conviction, not through dogmatism. In his biography, he stated that one afternoon he went through an experience which resolved for him forever the question of the existence of God. The experience, he said, could not be looked upon objectively as a potent proof of the existence of God, but he had no doubt that it was God's answer. I was in a state of semi-consciousness, halfway between a dream and reality. I saw the entire earth squeezed into a ball. There was no creation of any sort visible. No life, no cities, nothing, just the earth. 
Then I saw each particle of the world tremble and burst out into a slogan, Ah, God! Each particle was proclaiming the reason for its existence. The whole world was flooded with a strange light, and every atom of the earth began to swell and contract in rhythm. I found myself repeating the words, Our God. As he returned to full consciousness, he could still see it happening. Although he never had any doubts, this experience affirmed his faith in an unshakable belief in God's existence. The political situation of the subcontinent of India in the 1940s became very fragile. The British monarchy had decided that the subcontinent should be divided into two separate nations, one for Hindus and one for Muslims, and be given independence. Muslims and Hindus had lived for years as neighbours, but at the height of the unrest, without rationale, suddenly hated each other. No one was safe. Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad was now a strong young man and part of the Ahmadiyya youth movement, Khudamul Ahmadiyya. He was among many from Khudamul Ahmadiyya who formed into companies and battalions for the defence of Qadian. He was appointed as the officer in charge of one of these units. His task was to organise the defence of the centre of Qadian. In August 1947, the community faced an unexpected crisis. The entire area had fallen inside the territory allocated to India. His father, the head of the community, ordered the evacuation of Qadian. At that time, my late father was sent a message by late Mahatma Gandhi, exactly pointing out to him the so-called mistake he was about to commit. My father, then in a sermon, he told Ahmadis in very clear terms what was in store for them. He said, we are opting for Pakistan, yet I assure you that in Pakistan you will be dealt with so cruelly and you will be deprived of all your rights ultimately that if I tell you now you will shudder and the weak among you may uh, have heart failures. But there is no option because once we accept, we opt out of the Muslim Ummah, for us, physically and uh, politically, it may seem to be an easier, more acceptable cause. But to the message of Ahmadiyya, that will be a deadly poison. So whatever decision was taken, was taken with full knowledge of what was to happen. Leaving 313 Ahmadis behind to look after the property of the community until they could return, the members of the community migrated. In Pakistan, the community established a new centre on a 1,034-acre site near the west bank of the river Chenab. It was called Rabva. All the sons of Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad had been dedicated to the service of the community, including Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad. He started working in the youth movement, Hudam al Ahmadiyya, and proved to be a good administrator and an exceptionally hard worker. Uh, when he uh, became a Khadim, he became a Sayyik and then proceeded through the various responsibilities within the organization of Majlis Khadam Ramdiya, culminating in uh, being a Naib Sadr and ultimately Sadr Majlis Khadam Ramdiya. At that time, it was for the whole world, and he served in that position uh, for many years. Along with the service to the community, he continued his secular studies at Government College Lahore. The Government College Lahore, a very reputable institution in the north of India, particularly in the Punjab. And there I studied for four years. I went originally for BSc, Bachelor of Science, but ended up by getting an honorary degree, a bachelor's degree. And again I studied in an Ahmadiyya institution and did my doctorate on comparative religion particularly in the study of Islam. By 1954, Rabva was a town of 45,000 people. In the centre of the town, gleaming in white brilliance, stood the elegant Mubarak Mosque. In March 1954, a young boy, about 19 years of age, he attacked Hazrat Khalifa al Sani when he finished his leading his Asr prayer in Masjid Mubarak and he uh, stabbed him 
on his neck and the knife entered the blade entered deep in the body though the wound itself was to heal rapidly it had a serious effect on his nervous system his health deteriorated and he was unable to work his usual long hours some 2 years later he went to seek advice from specialists in london quite a few members of uh, huzur's uh, family uh, accompanied him huzur among huzur's children was uh, hazrat mirza munawar ahmed sahab dr mirza munawar sahab uh, mirza mubarak ahmed sahab then mirza tahir ahmed sahab after the treatment hazrat khalifa tul masih the second decided to return to rabwa but he left hazrat mirza tahir ahmed now aged 26 behind in london although according to the original plans he was due to return with his father but his father had other plans for him in london he lived in maida vale and studied at the university of london although he had learnt english at school it was at the london university where he learned how to express himself better in the language whilst in london he also had the opportunity to travel in europe and meet a range of people about his experience in london he states in his biography At the School of Oriental Studies I had met people from all over the world from Africa from Germany and Poland from all parts of Europe really and from America and Canada and South America I believe that was important that God had decided that was what I should do even though I did not know it at the time he had decided that I should meet all these people and that I should go out and travel in Europe I think that was his design He returned to Rabwa in October 1957 and got married in December that year to Hazrat Saida Asifa Begum. That very same year, Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi II appointed him at the office of Vaqf Jadid, which looked after the needs of Ahmadis living in rural communities in East and West Pakistan. His new post in the Vaqf Jadid put him in direct contact with the small farmers, villagers and shopkeepers, who were one of the great strengths of the community. He was always very caring for the poor and the needy and this was also apparent in his personal life. Uh aur baaki liye to baaki mujhe bahut badi se main dekhti thi ki bahut zyada banai tarakti kyunki matlab main hum log tab hi chote the to mujhe yaad hai jab hum log kabhi zameena bazaar pe bachiyan ja rahi hain तो उम्मी का कहा उम्मी हमें पैसे दे मैं नमीना बाजार है हमारे स्कूल का तो उम्मी के ने भी दिए नहीं थे या कम दे रही थी जो भी था तो अब्बा ने सुन लिया अब्बा कहते कि मैं देता हूँ तो दस दस रुपये दिए थे उसका कर दस रुपये बहुत ज़्यादा लगते थे तो क्या था लेकिन एक शर्त है कि तुम लोगों ने साथ अपने साथ किसी गरीब बच्चों को भी साथ कुछ खराब फुलाओगी और ये करोगी तो शुरू से इतना मतलब ये था कि हर चीज़ में तुम लोगों ने उनका हिस्सा रखना है और मोहब्बत करनी है उनसे और इसी तरह अब घर में मुलाजम के साथ भी बहुत ज़्यादा हसन सलूक से रखते रहते थे कि यहाँ तक कि एक दफ़ा मुझे याद है उम्मी को कह रहे थे कि लोगों को तो मुलाजम रखने की मुसीबत होती है कि आते नहीं हैं हमारे हमें निकालने की मुश्किल पड़ जाती है उनको फिर जाते नहीं हैं इतने अच्छी तरह रहते थे कि वो जाने पे भी नहीं राजी होते थे बस दे वॉज स्पेशल बॉन्ड बिटवीन हिम एंड पीपल आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ एंड वाई बट इट वॉज अ स्पेशल बॉन्ड हु एवर यूज टू uh be with him once he used to get uh, hooked to him wherever he worked he worked uh, very hard and he always worked and showed his example but he used to work in the land as he was he is a peasant so to show them that he can do what whatever he asks them to do he can do himself also so he was a great leader and uh, very active and eloquent and uh, you know he was a good speaker he could speak for hours on different topics later he started question answer also with nona mudis aise khalifa salif bhi jab log aaya karte the gair jamaat maulvi wagaira bhi aate the 
तो हज़र खलीफा सालिस ज़्यादातर अब्बा के कोई कहते थे कि आप इनसे मजलिस करेंगे He led a very disciplined life, serving the cause of the community. He used to start his day very early in the morning and was at his office well before anyone else. फिर अब्बा चले जाते थे अपने वक्फ जदीद के दफ्तर तो दोपहर को आते थे ढाई से तीन साढ़े तीन के दरमियान और उस वक्त उनके मुलाजमीन भी अपने क्वार्टरों में जा चुके होते थे कि भी अब्बा ने किसी को नहीं कहा कि मुझे खाना निकाल के दो या गरम करके दो खाना पड़ा होता था और खुद ही निकाल के बैठ जाते थे हम लोग तो बच्चे थे तो मुझे याद है कि ऊपर के थोड़ा मेज़ों पे भी चढ़ के बैठ जाते थे अब्बा के साथ बैठते हैं फिर तो कल सी बात थी तो उसके लिए सारी बातें करते रहते थे सवाल जवाब और अब्बा बड़ी खुशी खुशी से और बात का जवाब भी दे रहे हैं और साथ साथ खाना भी खा रहे हैं इतना मोहब्बत का जो लोग बंदा हुआ था कि अब्बा की नाराज़गी सबसे बड़ी सजा लगती थी इसलिए ये होता था कि अगर जहाँ ये देखते थे कि अब्बा को किसी बात से तकलीफ़ हो रही है तो हमारे लिए सख्त तकलीफ तो शर्म वाली बात बन जाती थी तरबियत का मुझे जो सबसे अब्बा का अंदाज़ अच्छा लगा कि बच्चों से या किसी से भी ऐसी मोहब्बत का सलूक बांध लेते थे कि उसकी वजह से इंसान बहुत सी बातों से बच जाता है It is one of the ironies of history that the Ahmadiyya movement which was instrumental in the creation of Pakistan was persecuted by the so-called religious scholars or ulama who had been so violently opposed to its creation. The persecution was politically inspired to divert the attention of the population from real problems that the country was facing. 1953 saw some of the worst rioting against Ahmadi Muslims and the community. There was uh, a generalized riot in the punjab mm-hmm. it was uh, supported by the punjab government quietly not officially mm-hmm. so it became out of control get went out of control and ultimately march the first martial law was imposed because of this this wave of persecution continued for nearly 20 years both at institutional and grassroots level what you observe today in pakistan is not just uh, a public wrath turned against the ahmadis yeah. it is the, the government, pros- government it's the legal state. persecution it's the state persecution yes, yes. in 1965 hazrat halifatul masi the second passed away hazrat mirza nasir ahmad the son of halifatul masi the second and the elder brother of hazrat mirza tahir ahmad was chosen as the third khalifa the problems for the community continued in pakistan Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad worked under the guidance of the third khalifa to deal with the problems the community was facing. In 1974, legislation was proposed in the National Assembly of Pakistan declaring that Ahmadis were not Muslims. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmisi III led a five-man delegation to the National Assembly which discussed the proposed legislation. Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad was the youngest member of the delegation. a complement to his knowledge sagacity and familiarity with the history and traditions of the community in 1974 pakistan's national assembly declared that ahmadis were not muslims in 1974 bhutto committed the mistake of interfering with a religious process for which he was not politically entitled mm-hmm. you see yeah. and that opened the pandora's box after yeah. that nobody could be able to close it Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad continued to serve the community with great zeal. From 1979 to 1982, he served as the president of Majlis e Ansarula. He also served as director of Fazleoma Foundation and patron of the International Ahmadiyya Association of Architects and Engineers. His life took a dramatic turn in 1982. On the 8th of June that year, his brother and the head of the community Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmad Khalifa Tulmasi the 3rd passed away just before midnight wo raat wo raat 
वो रात बेपनाह थी और मैं गरीब था Nearly a hundred thousand members gathered at the headquarters in Rabwa. In accordance with the constitution of the community's electoral college, a meeting of the college was convened at the Mubarak Mosque in Rabwa to elect the new Khalifa. Under divine guidance, the electoral college elected Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad as the fourth Khalifa. Overwhelmed with emotion, he first took the oath and then the covenant of allegiance. Right from the outset of his khilafat, he served the destitute and the weak. The very first project he launched was the construction of suitable houses for the needy people in Rabwa. A neighborhood in the city was established under this scheme. It was called Bayutul Hamd. Only one and a half months after becoming Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmisi IV, traveled to Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Switzerland, Holland, Spain, the UK and Australia. He inaugurated the Basharat Mosque in Pedrobad, a town 25 kilometers outside Cordoba. This was the first mosque to be built in Spain in over 750 years. <laughs> इस मौके पर मुझे एक याद सता रही है उस वजूद की याद जो आज हम में नहीं जो सबसे ज्यादा इस बात का अंदाज था आज ये जुमा पढ़ाता और आज इस तकरीब का आगाज करता कि वो बेकरार दुआएं जिनकी कबूलियत का फल हम आज खाने लगे हैं he addressed several press conferences, wherein he provided erudite interpretation of Islamic teachings. The newly elected Khalifa was on a peaceful mission, a mission to serve humanity. But the political situation in Pakistan became worse than ever before. The moment I was selected by Allah to lead the Jamaat, Zia did not like this perspective at all. The regime of Zia wanted some uh, political philosophy to support the, 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 their regime politically and to give them a reason, a, a justification for remaining in power. So what they said was, they said they are the custodians of Islam. As such, they have to serve certain purposes for the sake of Islam. And as long as those purposes are not served and achieved, they would remain in power. You know, as if they were commissioned by God to do that. So for this, they had to align and implicate mullahs and to uh, uh, utilize and exploit them. And what was the purpose for which they were destined to play a very important role, you know? The purpose was to destroy the foremost enemy of Islam, that is Ahmadiyya community. It was during Zia's time the persecution against the Ahmadiyya community peaked. Their shops were pillaged and set on fire, and mobs rioted outside their mosques. The discrimination practiced by the Bhutto government was stepped up. Hazrat Khalifa Turmasi IV urged restraint on his followers. Do not respond to these provocations. He denounced in sermon after sermon the injustices that Zia was inflicting. God would punish him if he continued in his evil ways. God's wrath would be terrible. Hazrat Khalifa Turmasi warned him again and again, but the general paid no attention to the warnings and continued to plot schemes in order to destroy the community. You know, when I suspected that some thing is cooking against Ahmadiyya between the Mullahs and the, the then dictator of Pakistan, Ziaul Haq, instead of running away, I went straight to Islamabad and camped there for seven days. 
He had many friends among the diplomatic community. Some he met at their offices, and some privately. From the meetings, he gathered something was going to happen, but no one seemed to know exactly what. Until the Deputy Commissioner of Islamabad sent me a very urgent message. This Deputy Commissioner said, my earnest advice to you is, for God's sake, return immediately to Rabba, or it will be too late. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV immediately returned to Rabwa. On the 26th of April 1984, Ordinance 20 was introduced under martial law by General Ziaul Haq. The ordinance was designed to prohibit Ahmadis from practicing their faith. I immediately called a meeting of all the Ahmadi elders, whoever were available at the time, to reach Rabwa immediately. I stated before them the facts, the consequences of this ordinance. I told them that according to this ordinance, if I remain in Pakistan and declare myself to be a Muslim, immediately they would arrest me and put me behind the bar. So how can I remain a Khalifa of Jamaatul Ahmadiyya, Khalifatul Masih, and operative at the same time? The advice at the meeting was unanimous. Huzoor should leave Pakistan immediately. At that time, Usman Chu, a missionary of the community who had no idea of what was being planned, saw a dream. On the 30th April, और जब मैं इस पास के करीब गया तो मैंने खुजूर को नहीं दिखा और यह समझा कि खुजूर तो ऐब की तरीक इस्लामाबाद तशरीफ ली गए हैं और पास के अंदर तो सब कुछ सामान मौजूद हैं फिर मैंने उसी पास में खुजूर की अलविदा कहने के लिए बैठ गया और फिर तारुम के साथ सफर करने लगा कुछ सफर करने की कुछ सफर करके उधर किया और फिर तारों ने मुझे कुछ फाल दिया इस खाब से मैं समझता हूँ चंद बातें जो मैंने खुद के दौरान पेश भी किए थे नंबर वही ये है कि अनाथला जमात खुजूर हिफाजत फरमाएगा नंबर दो खुजूर सब के सब इनाम भी फरमाएगा फरमाएगा और और सब के सब नहायत ज़्यादा तरक्की भी देंगे इन शनबिलीव You know, that reassured me. I knew that with the grace of Allah, Allah's hand, He already has told us and forewarned us. It was decided that Hazur would leave Pakistan by KLM. Um, a messenger was sent to Karachi to do the booking instead of booking by telephone and that could be tapped. It was decided that I would leave on Sunday morning by car and then we reached Uh, at about 10.30 reached Karachi and uh, after eating food and just a little rest we left for the airport because the plane I remember left at 12.30 now they told me to come late I said there's no need for you to come early they said exactly five minutes from 
the time of the departure of the plane, we will send our special car. Everything seemed to be all right, and the manager assured that the flight would leave in time. And the car came exactly five minutes before 12.30, and it was sent back. The, the uh, airport authorities, they stopped the flight from going on the, on the scheduled time. The order that I said of the India community is not permitted to leave the country from any borders was signed by Zia himself. Ziaul Haq lived most of his time during the time of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Salis, the third caliph. So what he dictated was, and this is the written on, on the on the that uh, prohibition letter, that Mirza Nasir Ahmed, the fourth head of the MJ community, <laughs> That is not permitted to leave the country from any borders. They had a dilemma. They could not stop Mirza Tahir Ahmed from going on. And they did not know much intricacies about the fourth and third caliphate. You know? <laughs> so they must have started ringing the intelligence chief of the intelligence bureau in Islamabad and trying to get clearance from him or instructions that this is the case. That is why this was delayed. So at 1.30, we left. The plane, of course, went to Geneva and from there on to this, uh, Holland. And there we had to wait for a while. Then we came to London. Around midday, Huzur arrived at uh, Heathrow Airport. And by the grace of Allah, we had made all the arrangements no problem, no difficulty, and the staff of the KLM on which uh, the airline on which Huzur travelled, they were also available uh, to receive Huzur. Once in London, Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi could carry on his duties as the Khalifa. He, however, had to establish London as the new headquarters of the community. He had a knack of making everybody feel extremely special. You know, whatever he wanted someone to do, he made them feel that they, they were capable of doing whatever that was. He would find out what type of worker is he, and he would accordingly allot him the tasks. And uh, he was uh, very clear in his mind. He wanted the job to be done, to be done to the exact manner what he wanted to. And uh, when that work is done, then he will, he will you know, praise him like anything. और हौसला अफजाई की तो इंतहा थी छोटी सी छोटा सा किसी ने काम किया तो उस पर इस तरह दाँत देते थे कि आदमी शर्मिंदा होता था कि ये तो मैंने तो कुछ भी नहीं किया और उसके नतीजे में फिर इंसान को एक और ताकत मिलती थी वो मैं जब मैं समझता हूँ कि असल में खलीफतलमसीह की दुआ और रूहानी तोज्जो और हौसला अफजाई के नतीजे में एक ताकत मिलती थी और वो जो उसने छोटा सा काम किया वो उससे कई गुना कर जाता था अगली दफ़ा उस पर जब हौसला अफजाई उसे मिलती थी और दुआ और तोज्जो और शफकत तो उससे फिर और आगे बढ़ता था एंड आई थिंक पीपल जस्ट कुड डू इनाफ दे वो ट्राइंग दर बेस्ट टू फुलफिल वॉट एवर वॉज द नीड एट द मोमेंट हजरत मिर्जा ताहिर अहमद वॉज अ विजनरी ही फोर सो द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ द कम्यूनिटी एंड द नीड फॉर वर्कर्स इन एवरी स्फेयर ऑफ लाइफ इन द कमिंग डेकेड्स you know this wakfino scheme he started in on 3rd april 1987 and i am surprised because in 1984 he left pakistan in very difficult conditions you know there was law against us so he had to leave pakistan but within 3 years he realized that jamaat is now going to expand in much uh, bigger uh, scope so for that he, he uh, instructed jamaat the parents that they should offer their children even before the birth and then train them accordingly so they become good waqfi na zindagi har mulk se jab waqf honge bacche to us mulk ki zuban ko bhi samajhte honge us mulk ke mizaj ko bhi samajhte honge jab us mulk mein ye bacche waqf karke bade honge aur kaam karna shuru karenge to ye bahut acha kaam kar sakte hain और ये बजाय इसके कि एक जगह से वक्फ होकर निकलें 
یہ ساری دنیا میں تنظیم کی طور پر اس طرح پھیل پھیل جائے Once the new setup in London was established, Hazrat Khalifa Tulmisi IV was able to lead the community freely. However, back in Pakistan, Zia's persecution continued. Zor's warnings grew stronger and stronger, night after night, month after month, He prayed to God for help for his beleaguered people. He warned Zia in his sermon on the 3rd of June, 1988. And Pakistan ke bad naseeb Sarbarah ne jo pehle dictator ke taur par zahir huye phir uske baad sadar ka chola pehna wo is waqt Hazrat Masih Mohd Alayhi Salatu Wasalam ki takzeeb ke sabse bade alambardar hai. اور ان کے تمام ماننے والوں کو بھی اور ان کو بھی جو تقریب میں پیش پیش ہیں اور حکومت پاکستان سے تعلق رکھتے ہیں اور ان کو بھی جو تقریب میں پیش پیش ہیں اور علماء کے طبقے سے تعلق رکھتے ہیں ان کو بھی جو تقریب میں پیش پیش ہیں اور عدلیہ سے تعلق رکھتے ہیں ان کو بھی جو تقریب میں پیش پیش ہیں اور سیاست سے تعلق رکھتے ہیں ان کو بھی جو تقریب میں پیش پیش ہیں اور عوام سے تعلق رکھتے ہیں لیکن کچھ گروہوں کے سربراہ ہیں ان سب کو میں مخاطب کر کے تمام جماعت احمدیہ کی طرف سے مباہلے کا چیلنج دیتا ہوں اگر تم مباہلے کے لیے تیار ہو تو میں جماعت احمدیہ کی سربراہی میں اعلان کرتا ہوں کہ لانت اللہ القاظبین تم بھی اپنے چیلو چانٹوں کو اکٹھا کرو اپنے بڑوں اور چھوٹوں کو بلاؤ اپنی عورتوں اور بچوں کو بلاؤ اور یہ یہ اعلان جماعت احمدیہ کے مدد مقابل کرنے کے لیے The challenge of Mubaila had been issued, but despite the warnings, Zia did not mend his ways. حکومت کا جہاں تک تعلق ہے وہ معصوم احمدیوں پر قانونی حربے استعمال کر کے طرح طرح کے ستم ڈھا رہی ہے اور آپ کو یاد ہوگا کہ میں نے آغاز ہی میں حکومت کو یہ متنبع کیا تھا کہ آپ اگر اپنی شان کے خلاف بھی سمجھتے ہوں چیلنج کو قبول کرنا اگر آپ زیادتیوں سے باز نہ آئے اور ظلم و ستم کی یہ راہ نہ چھوڑی تو جہاں تک میں سمجھتا ہوں خدا کی تقدیر اسے مباہلے کے چیلنج قبول کرنے کے مترادف بنائے گی اور آپ سزا سے بچ نہیں سکیں گے حضرت خالفہ تلمسی دا فورتھ سو ان ڈریم وچ کنٹین دا میسج فرام گاڈ آئی سو ان ڈریم دیٹ آئی واز ٹرانسلیٹنگ اے پورشن آف حضرت مسیح ماؤ دا فاؤنڈر آف دا احمدیہ کمیونٹیز رائٹنگس دا ہسٹری ریپیٹس اٹ سیلف بٹ ناٹ دا وے یو تھنک اٹ ریپیٹس اٹ ریپیٹس اٹ سیلف ان اے ڈفرینٹ وے And when I said this, there were some Englishmen sitting around me, and they said that you are not making the correct translation. The history repeats itself, as we understand, is, is a different concept. But there are certain things which in essence always repeat, and nobody can change the course of this history. Those who clash with God or the, his messengers, they are always destroyed. That is how history repeats itself, not like you understand. And in the morning, when I got up, then I knew it was a message about Zia. On Friday, the 12th of August, under divine guidance, Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV declared there was no way back for Zia. This means that we are talking about the people we are talking about today, جس کو ہم نے مباہلے کی دعوت دی ہے بدقسمتی سے ان کے مقدر میں خدا تعالیٰ کی ناراضگی کا دن دیکھنا ہے ورنہ اللہ تعالیٰ اس رنگ میں مجھے یہ پیغام نہ دیتا کہ ہسٹری ریپیٹ سے سیلف اس میں کوئی تبدیلی نہیں دیکھو گے مجرموں کو خدا ضرور سزا دے گا جماعت احمدیہ تو خدا تعالیٰ کے فضل سے ایک والی رکھتی ہے ایک ولی رکھتی ہے جماعت احمدیہ کا ایک مولا ہے اور زمین و آسمان کا خدا ہمارا مولا ہے 
लेकिन मैं तुम्हें बताता हूं कि तुम्हारा कोई मौला नहीं खुदा की कसम जब हमारा मौला हमारी मदद को आएगा तो कोई तुम्हारी मदद नहीं कर सके खुदा की तकदीर जब तुम्हें टुकड़े टुकड़े करेगी तो तुम्हारे नामो निशान मिटा दिए जाएंगे और हमेशा दुनिया तुम्हें जिल्लत और रसवाई के साथ याद करेगी On the 17th of August, the C-130 Hercules transport plane carrying General Ziel Haq was blown out of the sky. All 31 people on board died. The team investigating the crash eliminated one by one various possible reasons for the crash. How this had happened, the investigators were unable to say. Why it had happened, the whole world knew. I said that I had said that I had said that कि कल चली थी जो लेखू पे तेरे दुआ आज भी इज्न होगा तो चल जाएगी बस खुदा की कसम वो तेरे दुआ चल चुकी है अब इसे काट कर दिखाओ इसे रद्द करके दिखा दो तब मैं मानू The 23rd of March 1989 marked 100 years of the Ahmadiyya community grand ceremonies took place in almost 100 countries with special programs held in the headquarters in London to celebrate this momentous day from a humble beginning in Qadian to establishing communities in 120 countries the last 100 years saw the community grow from strength to strength 1991 was yet another special year for ahmadis they had just celebrated 100 years of the community's success through divine help this year was going to mark 100 years since the start of the community's annual conference hazrat khalifa tulmasi the 4th decided to attend the 100th annual conference himself India is fine you know I've been looking forward to visiting India for a long long time now It was an emotional journey as this was the first time since the partition he was going back to the town where the community had started It was this very town where he was born and spent his childhood Basti me ek apna bhi to ghar tha jaise sundar फिजा है दूसरे देखो ना इतने जमात के बानी पैदा हुए उन्होंने हवा इस हवा भी सह लिते गलिया फिरे उन्होंने मकाना च असी रह रहे हाँ यह जज्बाती तालुक इन्ना गहरा है कि एक मजहबी आदमी ही इन महसूस पूरी तरह कर सकता है लेकिन यह सिर्फ मजहबी तालुक नहीं गहरा इंसानी रिश्ता है और क्योंकि उन्होंने तालुक सारे इर्द गिर्द ही सन हिंदू बाजार नाल है उत्थे मलावा मल के नाल उन्होंने तलुकात हो सिखा के तलुकात उस सारे तालुक वाले उमट के पे ने और हर एक दसद है कि असी भी तो वाकफ वाले प्यार में वाकफा में है सारा माहौल लगता है कि जिस तरह अपने मुहब्बत करने वाले का माहौल है प्यार वाले का माहौल है बड़े लुत्फा रहे हैं बहुत खुशी मिली कॉन्फ्रेंस साढ़े वास्ते बहुत ज़्यादा अहमियत रखती है इस लिहाज न कि सौ साल के एक दफे ही आना है ना सौ साल का जलसा लेकिन इस जलसे नाल यह गल शामिल हो गई कि जदों की तकसीम हुई है हिंद पार्टीशन हुई है उदो बाद कोई खलीफा कभी इतने नहीं आया और पहली दफा अल्लाह तला ने मैं हिम्मत दी फैसला कर तोफीक फरमाई Thousands of Ahmadis from all over the world converged upon Qadian. Huzur addressed the annual conference. Sab aazreen e jalsa ko aur un sab ko bhi jo is saeed bakht jalsa mein shamooliyat se mahroom rahe hain. Main Hazrat Taqdas Masih Maud alaihi salatu was salam ke ilham ki zuban mein mubarak fa mubarak pesh karta hu. आज का ये तारीखी जलसा कई लिहाज से मुनफरद है और यकता है ऐसा जलसा एक ही दफा आना था और एक ही दफा आया है 
अल्लाह तला का बे इंतहा एहसान है कि उसने आज हमें इसमें शमूलियत की सदत बख्शी है Shortly after returning from Qadian, Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV had to bear a great loss. आज जुमे का मुबारक दिन है उनतीस रमज़ान है विदाई अलविदाई जुमा कहलाता है जुमतलविदा इस जुमे के आगाज ही में यानी जब सूरज ढल गया मजमरात का और इस्लामी नुक़ः नगाह से जुमे की रात शुरू हो गई और जब अंग्रेज़ी नुक़ः नगाह से भी रात के 12 बजे और एक दो मिनट ऊपर हुए उस वक्त मेरी बीवी को अपने रब का बुलावा आ गया फासले बढ़ गए पर कुर्ब तो सारे हैं वही ना वो तुम बद time was uh, of course for him it was a very emotional moment naturally for anyone in that situation but uh, the fortitude that he bore and how he bore this loss uh, both for his sake and for the sake of his family it was quite uh, it was more emotionally rendering i think for the community at that time because um, he was very uh, strike in 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 the face of uh, Uh, this this loss and uh, he bore it with great uh, fortitude and um, it was during i think um, again it was visible to see at uh, the namaz janaza prayers of uh, hazrat uh, sayyid asad beg sahab ye tere kaam hai maula mujhe de sab I think around that time perhaps it was Eid as well and his other jamaat commitments I think for us especially from a perspective of uh, the jamaat and those who are involved in the administration for us it was uh, again a lesson that uh, as Allah wills so be it but the cause of the jamaat uh, the further of the jamaat doesn't really be stopped tar hamare The 24th of March 1989 was a special day. It was the first Friday after the centenary of the community and Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV delivered his sermon. Aaj jo aap mere sath khutbah juma pad rahe hain, khutbah sun rahe hain ya juma pad rahe hain. Aapko main ye itla khushkun itla bhi deta hu ki is waqt is awaaz ko मॉरिशस के अहमदी भी सुन रहे हैं और जर्मनी के अहमदी भी सुन रहे हैं ये वो सदी का पहला खुतबा है जिसको आसमानी रसलो रसाइल के ज़रिए से जिसको सेटेलाइट हुकअप कहते हैं सबसे पहले मॉरिशस की जमात ने सुनने का इंतज़ाम किया और अब मुझे इतला मिली है कि जर्मनी की जमात ने भी इस खुतबे को बरह रास्त सुनने का इंतज़ाम किया हुआ है that further developed and it progressed into a way where thereby 24 countries joined that group of um, countries who were listening to his friday sermon through the telephone in 1991 huzur uh, graced the jalsa salana uh, of qadian darul aman on that historic occasion the addresses uh, of huzur rahmullah were relayed throughout the globe via satellite telephone link This laid foundations for a new form of communication 
and reached a new height on the 31st of January 1992. Today is a very important day in the history of the Jumaah. The Jumaah of the second century of the Jumaah is a very strong meal. और जमात को जमा होने के एक नए दौर में दाखिल कर रहा है। बनी नौ इंसान की तारीख में पहली मर्तबा हज़रत मसीह माउदल्लाह सल्लतुल्लाह के साजिद गुलाम और खलीफतुल मसीह को ये तौफीक मिली है कि ऐसा खुतबा दे रहा है, ऐसा जुमा पढ़ा रहा है, जो एक बहुत ही ताकतवर बर्रे आज़म के एक किनारे से दूसरे किनार Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV's vision to lead the community to new heights manifested itself in the creation of a TV channel that would connect the community to their beloved leader. Initially, his Friday sermons were transmitted in Europe only, but on the 21st of August 1992, the transmission started spanning four continents. Through the blessings of this new medium, the barriers of distance were broken and the community came together at the hand of Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV at the annual conference in 1993. <laughs> مختلف زبانوں میں ایک شخص کے ہاتھ پر بیعت کر رہے ہوں اور وہ شخص حضرت عبدالس محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کے ایک غلام کا اپنا غلام ہے آج میں آپ سے اہل بیعت لیتا ہوں ہاتھ بڑھائیے اشہدو اللہ الہا That the international bath took place during the Jalsa. That event actually was telecast live throughout the globe. And that's how this concept of Hazur Ramullah was um, actually materialized. And that was, I think, the milestone. That was the turning point from where um, Hazur wanted to progress forward, carry that momentum forward. This momentum took MTA to a new level, and on the 7th of January 1994, MTA started its daily transmission from its Earth station in London. Alhamdulillah, that today was the day of the Jumaah, which was a long time ago in my heart, and was a long time ago in my heart. آج خدا کے فضل کے ساتھ انٹرنیشنل احمدیہ مسلم ٹیلی ویئن کا باقاعدہ آغاز ہو رہا ہے وہ جو جمعہ کا خطبہ پہلے ہر جمعہ سنایا جاتا تھا وہ اگرچہ اسی ٹیلی ویئن کے ذریعے تھا لیکن ایک روز مرہ کی سرویس کے طور پر ابھی یہ جاری نہیں ہوئی تھی پس الحمدللہ کہ جس جو خوشخبری میں نے موریشس کی سرزمین سے دی تھی آج انگلستان کی سرزمین سے یہ اعلان کرنے کی توفیق مل رہی ہے کہ آج سے بقاعدہ مسلم ٹیلی ویئن احمدیہ کی روزانہ سرویس کا آغاز ہو چکا ہے حضور رحم اللہ I think he I could always feel that whatever we talked about whether it was about the, the commercial side of the contracts, the satellite contracts, very complex satellite contracts, whether it was about the technological aspects of the television, of the broadcast industry, of the satellite transmissions, I always found that he was one step ahead. I don't know how. To, to, to even this day, I don't know. That he was. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV maintained a deep interest in the administration and the overall supervision of MTA. Under his guidance, the channel progressed rapidly, 
starting its 24-hour service across the globe on the 1st of April, 1996. He personally initiated new programmes and participated in countless broadcasts, ranging from lectures, sermons, question and answer sessions, to teaching the Holy Quran and homeopathy. Catering for a variety of languages for young and old, he ensured that MTA sought to provide an education and training medium unrivaled in history. He used to love children and would sit among them and tell them stories and at the same time teach them some very important lessons in life. His charismatic personality graced the screens of millions. Suddenly the boundaries were shrunk and his message could reach them no matter where in the world they were. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV was an internationally acclaimed thinker and scholar of comparative religion. He was a prolific writer and author of many scholarly works. In his books, he dealt with social, political and moral issues facing the world. Some of his books include Murder in the Name of Allah, Gulf Crisis and the New World Order, Universal and Moral Values, Politics and World Peace, Islam's Response to Contemporary Issues, An Elementary Study of Islam, Christianity, A Journey from Facts to Fiction, Absolute Justice, Kindness and Kinship. His masterpiece was Revelation, Rationality, Knowledge and Truth. Hazrat Khalifat Tulmisi IV was a great poet. His collection of Urdu poetry, Khalam e was also published during his lifetime. He had a profound understanding of religious scriptures. He delivered lectures and held classes to teach the meaning of the Holy Quran. For the benefit of mankind, he also translated the Holy Quran in a fluent, simple and easy to understand form. His question and answer sessions were a testament to his knowledge. He was asked all kinds of questions on all kinds of subjects. Whether it was science or religion, moral or social issues, he was never short of a reply. <laughs> होमपैथिक के लतारा ने तो फीक दी और उसमें ये भी हुआ कि बहुत बढ़ के वरबा का भी इलाज किया अपने। His interest in homeopathy developed with an incident in his early twenties when he used to suffer from migraine। मुझे एक सरदर्द की तकलीफ होती थी जो मेग्रेम कराती है इसलिए फिर मैंने हर मुस्लिम औरत की तरफ जो किया आपके पास एक दवाई थी सेंडोल जो कलकत्ते से आया करती थी एक दफा छोटी मेरा मेरा पागो मैंने लेटा हुआ था काफी तकलीफ थी आंख खोलने भी मुश्किल थी तो गर्मियों की शाम थी मैंने कहा अब अबजान से जाके मेरी सेंडोल ले आए तो कुछ देर के बाद वापस आई तो उन्होंने कहा कि वो सेंडोल तो खत्म हो चुकी है तो उन्होंने फरमाया है कि मैं होमोपैथिक दवाई देता हूं ये इस्तेमाल करके देख लो उस वक्त तक मुझे कोई खास यकीन नहीं था होमोपैथी पे तो बरकर मैंने कहा ठीक है वो दवाई के मुंह में मेरी पुड़िया मुंह खोल दिया आंखें बंद उसी तरह और पुड़िया मुंह में डाल दी मीठी गोलियों की 
और कुछ देर बातें दो तीन मिनट बातें की क्या मैं जान लगी हूँ कुछ फ़र्क पड़ा तो अचानक मुझे महसूस हुआ कि दर्द है ही नहीं यानी होने और ना होने के दरमियान जो नो मैंस लैंड है वो भी नहीं थी तो उससे मुझे यकीन हो गया कि ये कोई जादू टोन का नहीं है ना महज तबर बल्कि इसमें कुछ हकीकत है कोई खुदा तला ने निज़ाम जारी फरमाया हुआ है फिर मैंने हज मुस्लिम हाउस के की लाइब्रेरी से ही वहाँ बहुत किताबें थीं बड़ा जखीरा था जाकर वहाँ से तबीयत पूछने जाया करते थे हम आमतौर पर मगरब के बाद जाया करते थे तबीयत पूछ के फिर मैं लाइब्रेरी में चला जाता था फिर वहाँ से उठानी भी शुरू कर दी और घर ले आता था और बाद सारी सारी रात पढ़ता रहा तो बहुत लम्बा अरसा मैंने शनासाई हासिल की है और अभी इलाज नहीं शुरू किया बल्कि किताबों पर किताबें पढ़ी उनको दवाओं के मिजाज को अपने जहन में उसका उनका नक्श जमाया फिर रफ्ता रफ्ता इसकी प्रैक्टिस शुरू की और मुझे याद है जब अब्बा ने शुरू की है होम्योपैथिक तो हम तो बहुत छोटे छोटे थे तो घर में एक छोटी सी बीमारी होती थी पिछले कमरे में उधर बीमार आके बैठते थे गाँव से या मुख्तु जगहों से आ रहे होते थे और कुछ जब ज़्यादा होना शुरू हो गया था बाहर भी बैठा करते थे फिर जब काफ़ी ज़्यादा बढ़ गए तो फिर अब्बा ने ये पहले तो पप्पी उसमें अभी सिंध हुआ करती थी मेरी पप्पी उनके घर ले गए थे फिर वहाँ भी जब नहीं समा सके तो फिर अपने वक्फे जदीद के दफ्तर में ले गए थे और उधर बैकते रहते डिस्पाइट हिज बिजी शेड्यूल आफ्टर बिकमिंग खलीफा ही कंटिन्यू टू प्रैक्टिस होम्योपैथी बावजूद दीगर तमाम मसरूफियात के रोज़ाना खतूत में सैकड़ों लोग मुसलमान गैर मुसलम अहमदी गैर अहमदी उनके खतूत आते थे अपनी अमराज के लिए वो इलाज मांगते थे हजूर की तरफ से उनके दवाइयाँ बताई जाती थी और सफ़रों में भी हजूर का ये तरीक था कि लोग आते थे जिसको भी पता चलता कि आप होम्योपैथी के ज़रिए भी इलाज फरमाते हैं हिंदू से खेसाई ला मजहब हर किस्म के लोग वो आते और आपसे होम्योपैथी जो है तरीका इलाज हासिल करते और उसके नतीजे में शिफा पाते थे and made every effort to make this form of treatment common his lectures were compiled as a book and were published under the title homeopathy like cures like he was a great humanitarian welfare of the weak and underprivileged was always very close to his heart under his guidance homeopathic clinics were established in addition to the large numbers of hospitals and schools open to serve the poor in the most needy countries of the world he also established an organization called Humanity first. The main purpose of this organization was to alleviate human suffering. Physicians, teachers, engineers and professionals from all walks of life belonging to the community volunteered their time to help the deprived by providing basic medical and educational needs. Special envoys were sent in war-torn and disaster-struck countries to provide urgent medical help and relief. if you believe in creator you must also believe in his creation if you love the artist you must also love his art as such our concept of islam is so beautiful and so well poised that it has started attracting um attention all over the world people from the north from the south from the west from the east all over the world joining ahmadiyat at a great speed which is uh, now turning into not a speed but uh, acceleration and uh, if you go to africa if you go travel to southeast asia small islands like tuvalu etc everywhere you will find more number of people joining amadiyat and finding peace finding a singleness of human character which is missing elsewhere
The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a truly global community. Under the dynamic leadership of Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV, the community continued to spread throughout the world. Right from the beginning of his Khilafat, he regularly travelled to European countries, including Germany, Holland, Belgium, France, Switzerland, Italy, Spain, Sweden, Denmark, Norway and Portugal. His visits enhanced the missionary efforts and rejuvenated these communities. In the Far East, he toured Singapore, Fiji, Australia, Japan and Sri Lanka to meet members of the community and to make an appraisal of the opportunities for further progress. He took the message of peace to the people of Africa and toured Gambia, Sierra Leone, Liberia, the Ivory Coast, Ghana and Nigeria in 1988. This highly successful tour of six countries spanned over five weeks. During his tour, he met heads of state, ministers, parliamentarians and paramount chiefs. The members of the community were overjoyed to meet the Khalifa. He breathed new life into the community, and many came into the fold of Ahmadiyyat. He continued the missionary efforts to Mauritius and East Africa, where he taught Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania. The South American countries of Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, Guatemala and Guyana were also blessed with his visits. Community members in these countries had the opportunity of meeting with his exalted personage and benefiting from his sublime discourses. The Ahmadiyya communities all around the world hold annual conventions to bring the community together. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmisi IV regularly graced and addressed these conventions during his visits. Among the many countries he regularly toured, the USA and Canada were fortunate to have their annual conventions blessed with his faith-inspiring addresses. During his visits, he also inaugurated new mosques in both Canada and the USA. After Huzur's migration, he graced the annual conventions held in the United Kingdom, and due to the headquarters being moved to London, they became an international gathering. Among the other European communities, in particular, the annual conventions in Germany were frequently graced by his presence. In July 2000, Huzur visited Indonesia, the largest Muslim country in the world. During the visit, Huzur met the President of Indonesia. He also addressed the community's annual convention of Indonesia, which attracted a large crowd. All these tours by Huzur strengthened and uplifted the spirituality and created awakening among the Ahmadi masses. Through his efforts, the community grew year after year. More and more people joined the fold of Ahmadiyyat and many new missions were established throughout the world. मुझे लगता है अब तक कभी भी किसी से मोहब्बत करने में कोशिश नहीं करनी पड़ी ये फितरत थी और फितरत थी और इसका इजहार भी बहुत खुल के किया करते थे इसलिए वो लोगों को चेक भी ज़्यादा करता था क्योंकि जो आपके दिल से उभर रही हो चीज़ वो जाहिर है ज़्यादा चेक करती है खैर हम उनकी इसलिए वो ज़्यादा प्यार करते थे क्योंकि इस ये तू से आए हैं उनकी तरबियत करना है हाँ जी उनको समझ आना है इसलिए बहुत प्यार करते थे अगर मैं समझ जाता हूँ वो मेरे साथ आज प्यार करते हैं हालांकि सर हम मेरे साथ प्यार नहीं करते पर लगे सारे गैर मुंडी से प्यार करते हैं जूर लव्ड चिल्ड्रन ग्रेटली ही वुड इवन स्टॉप फॉर देम पिक देम अप खड़ल देम गिव देम स्वीट्स मेक देम फील एस इफ दे वर हुजूर्स ओन चिल्ड्रन देर वाज सम स्पॉन्टेनियटी इन इन दैट सोर्ट ऑफ मेड यू फील अलाइव � cared for 
and he was quite um, strong on what was right and what was proper, what was Islamic and what was not. And, you know, there was no duplicity in him. I saw that I saw that I was very और वे पहचान भी जाते थे बहुत जल्दी पहचान लेते थे कि कोई झूठ बोल रहा है। He was able to read a mind of a person like anything. Uh, it was surprising. Well, he was uh, uh, just a complete man in himself. Uh, I think anyone who came into contact with him just thought that he had him for that period of time, as if he was just for his whole being was just for this one individual. And I think that was his greatest characteristic. He was so complete, that uh, so perfect in many respects. It was his knowledge, it was his sheer enthusiasm, but also that uh, in his personal life, he was so complete as well. We mentioned his uh, fondness for sport, his fondness for writing, and again, from cooking to photography, to hiking, to walking, to cycling, he just embodied everything that perhaps a perfect man can be, and I think that's uh, the best memory I have of him, and, and something that we all perhaps can strive to, into how we can balance our lives um, ultimately to, to achieve success, and also to balance both the spiritual side and the personal side of one's life. He spent his life in the service of humanity. The very first scheme of his Khilafat was set up to provide housing for the needy. And on the 21st of February 2003, he launched Maryam Shadi Fund, which was devoted to providing financial help for the marriage of girls in the poorest areas. Just two months had passed after the initiation of the Maryam Shadi Fund. On the 19th of April 2003, Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV passed away at the age of 74. मेरे दर्द की जो दवा करे Thousands of people came to pay their last respects. His funeral prayer was led by Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, the fifth successor to the promised Messiah. His sacred remains were reverently committed to the earth on the 23rd of April at Islamabad, Tilford. Hazrat Khalifa Tulmasi IV's leadership was characterized by vibrancy and dynamism that became the hallmark of his 21-year tenure of office. He spread the message of God. He was a fountain of knowledge. He touched the hearts of people. He was loved by young and old. He was a man of dignity, a man of peace. He was a man of God.